Hey y'all and welcome back to my channel. I am back with another video. <laughs> I'm so happy I'm finally able to say that again. <laughs> so basically today I will be telling y'all where I am in my nursing journey, how I got to where I'm at today, and to prep y'all for the upcoming series that I will have coming up. And it's basically just gonna be about how to become a nurse and we're gonna break that down but let's introduce you to what I have done what I have went through and what I'm doing now and yeah like basically all that good stuff <laughs> so before we get started if you were curious about the shirt that I'm wearing one of my co-workers her granddaughter has cerebral palsy and this shirt was a donation that we did to support her and also support research for cerebral palsy. So that's what that shirt is, just in case you were wondering. Now let's jump right into the video. Now I do have some notes here because I wanna try and give you as accurate information on the dates and everything that I did to get to the point where I'm at. So if you see me looking at this, that's what that is. So I have wanted to be a nurse forever like literally like since I was like that big <laughs> but I have always cared about people and I just knew I wanted to be a nurse specifically my future dream job is to be a nurse practitioner midwife so that's what I'm still on my way to doing we'll start with my high school graduation I graduated from high school in 2008 and I went straight to community college I did that because I knew I was still procrastinating and I just I just didn't want to do that yet I didn't feel like I was ready yet so I went to a community college to get my prerequisites done for my nursing program well I took kind of a long time doing my prereqs at community college and it's because basically I was procrastinating a little bit like a lot of it <laughs> and yeah like I still just it took me forever to finally get on track and to get done what I needed to get done I also was taking like one or two classes some semesters and obviously that's gonna slow you down but when you're taking four or five classes and you're only passing you know four of them or three of them it's like there's also no point in overburdening yourself and then ending up not passing those classes and having to retake them i graduated from in 2012 and i got my as degree when i was still at community college though before i graduated while i was in the hallway like waiting for a class or something i seen a flyer and the flyer was for a licensed vocational nurse. Hmm. Now that was new to me. I hadn't heard of a licensed vocational nurse or LVN as we call them here in California because we're special. A lot of the other states, they call them licensed practical nurses or LPNs. I didn't know what an LVN was, so I read the flyer and I was like, hmm. I paid attention to it because I knew that my grades that I, were, I was getting was not going to let me be able to apply to City College of San Francisco, CCSF, the community college that I went to. I didn't know if I was going to be able to apply to their program. I had, however, had the prerequisites to go to the LVM program. There were a few, there were like anatomy, physiology, and I think an English and a math class and something like that so i already had those prerequisites so i went ahead and i kept you know note of it and after i graduated from school i was like hmm let me try to see if i can get into this program which is what i end up doing and i knew I, what i had learned was that i can do an lvn to rm program in the future so I applied to the program and I got in on my first try. That was so amazing. I was so happy to get in on my first try. It was a lottery. So basically as long as you qualified and your name got entered, you were able to um, apply and it was randomly chosen who got into the program. 
I went to that program from 2013 and I graduated 2014. It was a three semester program. And in May of 2014, I graduated. I got my license in 2014. Whenever the board told me that I was able to take my license, I did it as soon as possible. I believe it was by like August or something. I had finally took my boards and I passed that on the first time. <laughs> I did really good in my LVM program, actually. Once I got into my nursing program, I was like, this is it, this is for me. So I do wanna note really quick before we continue on to my next step that if you're not doing that well in your classes, it doesn't mean becoming a nurse is impossible. It doesn't mean becoming an LPN, a registered nurse, or anything else that you're aspiring to is impossible. It means that you need to get your stuff together and you gotta figure it out. Yes, you have to figure that out, but it does not mean it's impossible. So I graduated, I became an LVN in 2014. When I got my LVN, oh wait, Hold on, I'm sorry, wait, I'm going too fast. So really quick, while I was still in the LVN program, after the first semester, you can apply to become a certified nursing assistant after your first semester of nursing school. This goes for registered nursing school as well. So I went ahead and did that. Now, let me tell you guys, the CNA exam is two different tests. You have to take a written test and you have to take a skills test. Well, the written test I passed first time, no problem. The skills test, I believe, I ain't even gonna lie, I took it like three times, okay? Two or three times I took that one before I passed. And it was like, to me, I was like, why am I not passing this? Well, what I learned was that in nursing school, they teach you very basic, okay? They don't teach you as if you're going to be a CNA. They teach you how to not harm the patient and what you need to do to do the thing, your nursing care for that patient. Anyways, I figured that out on my own. I read up on it and boom, passed the test, no problem. I worked as a CNA uh, for a short time let me tell you, it gave me an appreciation for my CNAs. Thank you. I worked at a skilled nursing facility that was very severely understaffed. So that was part of why it was extra taxing on the body. I did not stay at that job. I left and I began to do when I graduated. So now we're going back to when I graduated from the LVM program. I began to do school nursing and I began to do home health nursing. So with school nursing, I basically was either a one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two with a patient. And basically they were students that were in school and their teacher could not support their nursing needs. I was there for that. I would be there in case I had a seizure precaution, I had diabetic patients, I had patients that maybe needed a G-tube feeding during class and things of that nature. When I was in home health, I worked with babies and all the way up to elderly. So I was doing all different types of things, whether I had trach patients that were at home, I had babies that maybe were sick and their parents just needed a good night's rest. So I was there to stay up overnight with the child. From there, I went to a registry, which in the registry, uh, I was able to get a job at UCSF in primary care. Working in primary care, I did that for about one year at UCSF. And I worked with, again, from pediatric doctors all the way family medicine and internal medicine that went from, so I had a wide range. I got very good experience at UCSF. I was able to draw blood. I took vital signs, room patients. I had my own nurse schedule. I gave vaccines and different medicines. So I got very good experience at UCSF and I'm very grateful for that because that job landed me where I work now which I built this company for about six years. And basically I started as a, oh, I started in OBGYN and I worked in infertility. 
in infertility uh, i helped prep samples for intrauterine insemination i also assisted in those procedures i end up deciding that i wanted to move to fresno because i found the registered nursing program in fresno and by this time my prerequisites were starting to expire at certain schools they have recency requirements for your prerequisites which means that your prerequisites have to be taken within a certain amount of time for when you apply to the program. So at this time, mine were starting to expire for certain schools. Five years was the limit when I was at City College, I believe it was, and now I believe it's at seven years, the last time I checked, at San Francisco City College. Fresno City College I found and they did not have any recency requirements whatsoever. So I was able to apply to the Fresno City College program without having to renew my prerequisites. So that's one of the things that drew me to coming to Fresno besides for affordability because if you know anything about San Francisco, you know it's expensive to live in. <laughs> so I began my transition to moving to Fresno. I came here and I worked as an LVN in a SNF for a while, for about a year and a half. I was working full time at the SNF and I was also working at my now current job for uh, on-call positions. So I was so busy working, I didn't even apply to the program. I just came out here and I worked, 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 worked. I went back to San Francisco because I got a benefited position with my current job, which I really wanted to work for them. So I went back to San Francisco. I worked in the injection clinic. So I gave vaccines, medicines, antibiotics. February of last year, I moved back here with my current job, with a benefited position, and I am now doing COVID stuff with my current job. So basically when I moved back, I, I was doing vaccines, I was doing special projects, and now I'm doing COVID swabbing. When I moved back here, I was also accepted into the registered nursing program. So in about October 2020, I finally applied to the program and I found out in December of 2020 that I was accepted. Thank you, Lord. I was accepted on my first try. Again, this was a lottery as well, so I had all the points that I needed. I was entered into the lottery. They randomly select who's going to be in the program, and I was one of the lucky ones that was selected on my first try. So happy. And this is an LVN to RN program, by the way. So it took about one calendar year to complete this program. Two semesters. I started the program May 2021, and I graduated May 21st, 2022. Super exciting. Today is June 2nd, so I'm still on that high from graduating just two weeks ago. I now I just purchased today because I needed a little break, y'all. Like I needed a break. I purchased U World for Inclex Prep, RN Inclex Prep. And basically I'm gonna be using that. I have two assessments that I will be able to take and I will be able to practice in question banks to make my own test to practice for taking the NCLEX. I also applied to Fresno State, which I will be starting the RN to BSM program in the fall. If you are not getting the best grades, make sure you find out how you can improve that. If you need to take something out of your life, if you need to put something in your life, if you need to slow down, if you need to speed up, just make sure you do whatever you need to do. You can do it. Don't let anybody tell you it's impossible. I myself told myself that it was impossible. Oh my gosh, my grades aren't that good. I'm never gonna be able to be a registered nurse. I think I'm just gonna be stuck here and take your brain off of it for two, three years goes by. Next thing you know, all this time has gone by. Guess what? There was somewhere where you probably could have done it. 
but you didn't put that effort into it because you told yourself you couldn't do it. Don't do that to yourself. That's what I did to myself for a long time. But anyways, I just wanted to leave you with that because somebody out there needed to hear that. I will be giving you guys an update on everything that's going on. Let me know if you guys wanna see anything else I did make a Instagram, it's Marie Chalet TV, so you can follow me over there, subscribe to me here, comment, like my videos, share my videos, and I will see y'all in my next video. <laughs> Alright y'all, thank you for watching.